It's the only game in town now. <laughs> Democracy. And like it's written, I think, in the book of Jeremiah, Mr. Bush can say, as it's written there, I sit as a queen and shall see no sorrow. But God spoke and said, O virgin, daughter of Babylon, come and sit thou down in the dust. See, Babylon was like that. She was a great city that dealt in commercial enterprise and she waxed rich and strong, but in her midst were the Hebrews. The Hebrews that didn't belong to the Babylonians, they were taken out of their natural environment and brought into a strange land among strange people, taught a strange learning and a strange language and given strange names. Until one day Daniel arose and saw the handwriting on the wall. And he told the wicked king that his kingdom had been weighed in the balance and found wanting. Oh, virgin daughter of Babylon. She wasn't just a daughter, she was a virgin. Oh, that's, that's, that's a description. You know, a virgin means untouched, unspotted. That's the way America sees herself. She's destroyed nations, but no nation has bombed her. Not one of America's cities has suffered what America has put on cities of nations around this world. You that visit America, you can fly from the East Coast to the West Coast. You see an unbroken string of marvelous cities and towns that have never known the ravages of war. Not from the outside. It only knew war in the Civil War, in the War of 1812. And those, those were wars, but not since America has been developed in the modern context. The shock of the hour. Now, remember how I started the lecture? Talking about God in person? That's how we're going to end it. You see, if this is Israel, the real Israel, the hidden Israel, then if you look in the book of Revelations, you see a mystery Babylon. that was like a golden chalice on the outside, but filth and abomination of every kind on the inside. Here's America. The melting pot. Where you can walk the streets and hear so many different languages. It's like the Tower of Babel. And the people in America are confused and one against the other and that confusion is waxing stronger every day. But she's still the only game in town. But in her midst is a whole people that didn't come on the Mayflower. that didn't come seeking freedom, but came in the holes of ships as slaves. The same Jewish people that say they're our friends were the principal architects of the slave trade. They were the principal beneficiaries of the slave trade. We have this documented, sisters and brothers, from their own scholarly writings, not from the mouth of Louis Farrakhan. Right. 
they were the principal architects in distributing the slaves. They were the auctioneers that sold the slaves. They were the plantation owners that bought the slaves. They were the masters that worked the slaves. They were the ones that helped to rob us of our minds, of our names, our language, our culture, our religion, our God, so that today you know nothing of yourself because of your friends. It was Jews who fought against Nat Turner, then Mark Vesey, Gabriel Prosser, Toussaint L'Overture, Dessalines, Christophe. It was Jews who worked against Frederick Douglass, Jews who worked against Marcus Garvey, Jews that worked against Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Jews in the government, in the Justice Department, Jews that worked against the prophets of God. Take it or leave it. I have never claimed to be no prophet. I'm just your brother. But I come in the line like those ancient worthies. I'm in the most powerful government that ever was in the last 6,000 years. I want you to listen well now. I have greater enemies against me and this movement than Moses had against him, than Jesus had against him, than Prophet Muhammad had against him. My enemies are greater than all their enemies combined. So, so, if I survive, if, if I survive, like a lamb in the midst of ravenous beasts. If I survive, then the power that backs me is greater than the powers that are against me. God is in person today. Remember what I said at the beginning? I talked about a problem no man could solve. And I talked about a power that nobody could deal with. Where's the problem that no scientist can solve? Here we are, 30 to 40 million black people who have been turned upside down and inside out. 30 to 40 million black people who don't know who they are, don't know where they are, don't know what time it is, don't know who their God is, don't know what their religion is, but are trusting in the God of their slave master, a pale-faced, blue-eyed, blonde-haired, hook-nosed cracker that the white man gave you as Jesus. Jesus didn't look like the pictures they gave you. You are nothing more than devil worshipers. That's why you don't have any power in your religion against your enemy because you are worshiping in the religion that your enemy gave you. 
Your enemy gave you Christianity. Your enemy gave you this religion. A slave-making religion. Have no power in it to free you. Your enemy set up the church. Peter didn't set it up. Paul didn't set it up. The white man set it up. Didn't he? He set up the black church because he didn't want you in the white church. He gave you the black preacher. He taught him theology and told him what to preach. That's why you have never been able to be freed by no preacher. Because the preacher has always been the tool of the white man against you. Reverend, Reverend, my dear Reverend, my dear Reverend, if you continue to preach that damnable philosophy, your congregation one day will rise up and kill you in the pulpit. Because your people are rising today. And you can't preach no ethereal nothing they're going to get in the sky while they help to build a kingdom for the white man on earth. If you don't represent the kingdom of God on earth, you better find yourself some good preaching to give your people because they're waking up fast nowadays. I'm not saying that many black preachers are not sincere, but being sincere, wrong is to be dead right. Yes, sir. You get no high mark for being sincere. Yes, sir. You get a high mark for being right. Yes, sir. And ain't no white man gonna give you no theology and make you right for your people. Yes, Do you hear me? Yes, you can take it or let it alone. Bring me your degreed Negroes. Show me what they have done for black people. The white man doesn't give you a degree to serve your people. He gives you a degree to serve him. And this is what you and your people have done for 400 years. Serve your enemy. Fight for your enemy. Die for your enemy. Yes, Give your woman and your children to your enemy. Yes, you come here today with your white wives and your white husbands and your white boyfriends. You've got a hell of a nerve. After all the hell that your people have caught for 400 years, you bring the daughter of your slave master's children home and think we should accept her? Have you no sense at all? What self-respecting Jew would bring a German home and introduce a German lover to the children of the Holocaust? The black holocaust is worse than anything in the annals of history. How dare you bring that skunk home and offer her to us? We want you back, black woman. We want you back, black woman. 
You are our woman and we are your man. God gave you to us and God gave us to you. We are a sorry lot, but today God is in person. God is going to make a difference today. We have not been good men to our women. We have not been good providers for our women. We have not been good maintainers of our women. We have abused our women and our girls. We have low-rated them. We have disgraced them. But God is in person today. And just like it was in the beginning, God said, let us make a man. He didn't say, let us make a Negro, let us make a nigger, let us make a colored boy, let us make a man. And when God makes a man, and when God crawls up inside of what he made, that when that man speaks, God speaks. When that man walks, God walks. When that man acts, God acts. That's the man that you can fall in love with because you are the woman of God and you never have been the woman of man. Now the problem. The problem. 40 million black people yearning to breathe free. 40 million black people who have outlived their usefulness to white America. 40 million black people with a population ever growing. A youth population stronger as the white population gets weaker and older. A young population ready for war and ready for jobs, but there's no more jobs and it looks like war is no longer on the horizon, so the army is letting go the blacks. A problem in America. You live in the ghettos where there are no jobs for you. You live in the ghetto where there is no justice for you. You live in the ghetto where there's disease and death for you. You live in the ghetto where there's no friend for you. So you have become your own worst enemy. A problem that America says she can't solve. She calls you the permanent underclass. She has no solution to your problem. Yes, she now has decided to erase the problem yes, using chemical and biological warfare. Yes, you call it McDonald's. You call it Wendy's. You call it Burger King. You call it Taco Bell. You call it White House. What is the name of that? White Castle. White Castle. Y'all know what I'm talking about. These fast food merchants of death. Our young men and our young women weak. Filled with death and disease. A population where over 50% of our women are obese. You are filled with waste material. As I call you the human garbage pail. You begin to look like a garbage pail. You lose that beautiful form. The indentation of your waist and the beautiful curvature of your hips that have made the poets and the writers write about you from ancient antiquity write about your majestic beauty but today you've become an old round garbage pail filled up with the swill of greasy food wrong foods eating all times of the day and the night eating pork hog marred chitlins fat back greasy beef burgers 
French fry mania. Just love your fried food. You're lovers of garbage. And you stink like a garbage pail. And if we could open you up, you'd probably have more maggots in front of inside of you than they have in a garbage pail. The white man is killing you with your own mouth, killing you with your own hands. Merchants of death got these damnable supermarkets with these chemicalized processed foods. And you're eating them three, four, five, six, seven times a day and going to the bathroom once a week. Isn't that right, Dr. Torrey? <laughs> Dr. Tory is the king of waste elimination in the world today. <laughs> this is what's around your gut. It's a pail, and it is garbage. Release the garbage. Dr. Tory says that your best friend is the toilet stool. But you only see your friend every once in a while. I don't tell you to go hug your friend. I don't tell you to go kiss your friend. I just tell you to go sit down with your friend. After a while, when the waste starts leaving you, your skin begins to shine. Your eyes begin to get bright. Yes, you begin to look better. You begin to feel better. You think faster. Your body responds quicker. Old age begins to walk away from you as though old age had seen death. You begin to regenerate the cells. And instead of the process of decay, it is a process of renewal by waste elimination. Y'all all right? You live in the valley of the shadow of death. And death is all over you. And that's why when they come, they say, What the hell is that? When did Jesus tell you to come in? What is that? That's the sign of the cross. You see it on the ambulance when you're sick and on your way to die. You see it over all the cemetery tombstones. You sing the song, I'm going to exchange that old rugged cross, an emblem of suffering and shame for a starry crown. Well, we got your starry crown. Here it is. Why don't you come on and put it on? And now, and now, the one we have waited for, the one we have longed for, the one whose spirit we have been touched by. The one whose wisdom has nourished us. The one whose power has sustained us. But the one who was unseen and now live and in person. God is coming. God has come to teach and to claim and to seek and to save and to find that which was lost. Who is more lost than the black man and woman of America and the Western Hemisphere? You are lost in white people who are lost in their rebellion against God. You become lost in them. How did you become the drug man, the pimp? You weren't a drug dealer in the Holy Land. You weren't a pimp in the Holy Land. You weren't gay or lesbian 
in the Holy Land. You weren't a whole monger in the Holy Land. How did you become this? You got lost in the sins, in the perversion, in the debauchery, in the rebellion of your slave master. And so the Bible and the Holy Quran talk about Pharaoh and the children of Israel. Pharaoh had become so powerful that he was the only game in town. Pharaoh saw himself as a god and he forced the children of Israel to bow down and worship him. But then one day God came in person and Moses saw him in a bush that was burning but was not on fire, was not being destroyed. <laughs> Pardon me. Well, anybody got another handkerchief? I use that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my brothers are always there to help me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God comes. He's in this burning bush. Moses sees him. The Bible and Quran corroborate that story. The Quran calls it the Valley of Tuwa. The Bible says it was a valley. He saw fire. He went to the fire and a voice spoke to him out of the fire. He understood the voice. It spoke evidently in his language. It said, Moses, take off your shoes. The ground where you stand is holy. Moses was frightened. And the God said, Moses, I have chosen you to go to Pharaoh. Who am I to go to Pharaoh? I can't speak well. I, I, I have an impediment to send my brother Aaron with me. He, he speaks a distinct language. He, he's good at words. He was just frightened. But Allah answered his fear and said, who made your mouth? I made your mouth, Moses. Go and speak to Pharaoh what I command you. He said, well, who should I tell him sent me? And remember, we dealt with that last week. Yes, tell him I am. Yes, that I am. Yes, That's a hell of a way to say it, though, isn't it? Yes, Give me your name, man. Yes, I'm knocking on the door. Say, who's there? I am. That I am. Nigga, get away from my door with my shotgun. I don't know you. Tell me your name. But you see, I am is very good. Because I am is the present tense of the verb to be. And what he's saying is I'm present. I'm here now in person. He said, I have heard your moaning and your groaning by reason of your taskmasters. And I have come to see whether your cry is altogether that that I have heard. He came to kill Pharaoh. But he wanted to disgrace Pharaoh. Since the whole world was worshiping Pharaoh, he wanted to take a slave and whoop the hell out of Pharaoh with a stick. Just a rod that has some power in it. Oh man, that's heavy stuff. But that's 4,000 years ago, brothers. That's ancient history. It's recorded in the Quran, it's recorded in the Bible. What does it mean? We're not here for no ancient history class. Don't 
tell me nothing about how I am was I am. We need a I am today. We need somebody to deliver us as that one presented himself and delivered the children of Israel. Well, let's get that dollar out again. Come on, boy. Come on, girl. Or oh, they don't even say girl. Gal. Take out that dollar, gal. Take out that dollar, boy. A gal and a boy are children. Whose children are you? In the hell you are. You ain't God's children. If you were, you'd do the works of God. You are the children of Israel. This is Israel. Boy. Gal. White folk treat you like little children, don't they? You have never been a man in their eyes. And whenever one comes among you that tries to be a man, they kill him because they want you always to be their boy. Am I right? Yes, Just talk like you got some strength and they'll try to kill you. They don't want no man. The children of Israel. Here's the star of David. Here's the eagle. And in the 24th chapter of Matthew, it says, wheresoever the eagles are, gathered together, there shall the carcass be. What is the carcass? It's the remains of what? Of something that once was alive. You once were a great and living people. Now you are the dry bones in the valley of the shadow of death. Now in the Quran, Allah says, surely the hour is coming when all that are in their graves shall be raised. It ain't talking about people in that cemetery. It's talking about you and me buried under the rubbish of the white man's civilization. Your dead and dismembered, dried bones in the valley of the shadow of death. And every time somebody tried to raise you, white folk destroyed him. Or you destroyed him. Now, He's the only game in town. But guess what? Guess what? Guess what? He came in person. Oh, Farrakhan, come on now. Come on. Go open your Bible to the book of Habakkuk. It said God came from T-Man and the Holy One from Mount Paran. Matthew says, as lightning shineth from the east even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. He's a man from a man, yet God. Stop. Stop. What's wrong with you? You don't think a man can be God? Didn't your Bible say you were made in the image and the likeness of who? Well, ain't that, if that's your son, don't you expect him to grow up to be like you? Yes, sir. Well, 
Well, if God made you in his image and likeness, what are you supposed to grow up to be? Oh, talk to me. You can master the forces of nature. You can master creation. God created us to be masters, but we have fallen under the heel of our oppressor. And now a problem has been created that only God could solve. So the book said he came without observation. Like a thief in the night. What night? Was it last night? Was it the night before last? What night? Night doesn't mean a little 12 hour period of night. Night means when the people's minds were covered in the darkness of ignorance and they were not paying attention to the prophecies regarding the time. So he would show up as a thief in the night said if they had known what hour the thief would have come they never would have suffered their goods to be stolen well who's the goods that he's coming for he's coming for the sheep that was lost coming for you how would you know he came he came and raised one from our midst. A man that only went to the fourth grade of school, but he taught him well for three years and four months, and then he went away. He who? The mighty one. Master Farad Muhammad. The great Mahdi. Now the question is, is he God in person or is he an imposter. <laughs> Any man could come and say, I'm God to a fool like us. But can't any man do the work? So the impossible problem was created. Has anybody been able to solve this? But Elijah I'm talking about Elijah Muhammad. Yes, that man spoke to us in our grave of ignorance yes, and we came forward. Yes, Elijah Muhammad taught us the science of eating. Yes, he taught us the knowledge of ourselves, the knowledge of the enemy, the knowledge of God, the knowledge of the universe. He taught us the origin of the white race. He taught us the time and what must be done. He laid out a complete program for us that took into consideration our spiritual needs, our intellectual and mental needs, our psychological needs, our social needs, our economic and political needs, our scientific needs, our educational needs. He set it all out for us. And then he went away and left a black man in the midst of us to work for 40 years laying a foundation. He pointed out to Elijah Muhammad a dreadful looking plane in the sky. He told Elijah Muhammad that that plane, look up in this dome, look up in this dome. Look at the lights in the window. See, it's made like a wheel. Look at it good. If you look at it, it almost looks like it's turning. Not quite, unless you had something to drink. <laughs> I want you to look at this now. Ezekiel had a vision. And he looked up and he saw a wheel in the middle of the air. It had eyes all around it. Eyes mean windows. And eyes mean people looking out. 
it run by the grace of God. It was a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Ezekiel saw this 595 years before Jesus was born in a vision. When Elijah Muhammad met Master Farad Muhammad in 1931, he showed him the wheel actually in the sky. It's there now. It's a half a mile by a half a mile. It's like a city. It has 1,500 little wheels on it that are destructive bombing plants. Oh, I want you to listen. Well, you see, this lion ain't roaring because he don't have no backup. You know, when that policeman calls for backup, he can get bold as hell because he got a radio that gives him backup. Well, I can get bold as bold as never been because I have backup. I have God in person. Let me talk to you. I don't want you to get spaced out on me because I'm not going to Spaceville with you. These wheels have been seen all over the earth. A white man calls them unidentified flying objects and they are called above top secret. They don't even talk about it and if you see them, they try to discourage you to make you think you haven't seen them. Many presidents have seen them and wrote that they saw them and said that when they came to power, they would make it known and when they got in power, they kept their mouth shut. Jimmy Carter was one of those presidents. When I had a vision, and I'm not spooky, man, I won't lie to you if you put a gun to my head. No. I was taken up on the wheel in a vision. And I heard the voice of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad just as clear as you hear my voice. And he gave me some instructions. And I've been following those instructions, and the instructions are so mathematically precise. Haven't missed yet. When I had the, uh, the press conference, I was told on the wheel to have a press conference and tell the people what the government's plans were. And I held the press conference in Washington as I was instructed. Yes, sir. And told Bush what he was about to do. And I'm telling you, Bush was shook. Let me just tell you what I'm saying. I said, before you can make mockery of me, you will see the wheel over your heads. I left Washington. And the next day, the wheel appeared. And it stayed there for over a day. They kept filming it. Am I lying, Brother Minister? Did the wheel show up in Washington? Did they see it and picture it and put it on television? Whether you know it or not, I'm connected to that. No, 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 shut up, shut up. I don't want you to, I don't want you to applaud, I don't want you to say nothing. I just want you to think. Because I've never talked like this before. But it's time. I'm connected to that. It follows me wherever I go. You can read about it in Ezekiel in your Bible. Believe me, brother and sister, I'm not somebody you can take lightly. No, 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 no. You're going to answer for me. I've never talked like this before. But I really don't give a damn what you think about me. If I never see you again, you're going to meet every word that I spoke to you. 
there's power up on that wheel. And those powers are connected to the nation of Islam. The nation of Islam is not some little lightweight, rooty poop little group of people. We didn't start on our own. God started this. He came in person. That's why we look different from any person on earth today. Nobody looks like us. You know why nobody looks like us? It ain't just a diet. It's the presence of God himself in the word that we believe and the light and the power in that word illuminates our very being. We are strange people in your midst. You look at us, but you don't know us. We grew up with you, but you don't know us. We're strange people. because we believe that God came in the person of a real live human being who has power over all things. And that human being raised up another human being, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and that man called us out of darkness into this kind of light. Now this wheel has 1,500 planes on it. And each of those planes carries three bombs. And the bombs on those planes are the same kind of high explosives that were used to bring up the mountains on the earth. You say mountains brought up by high explosives? Yes. Yes. The Holy Quran says, and we raise mountains on the earth, lest it convulse and carry you away. The same way you put weights on your tire to give balance to your tire so you have a smooth ride down the highway. The earth is oblong, not round. But you're riding a very smooth ride at the speed of 1,037 and a third miles per hour, and you don't even feel a jolt unless God makes the earth quake under your feet. Why is your ride so smooth? It's because like you put weights on an imbalanced tire, God rose up mountains on the earth, lest the earth convulse and carry you away. How do you raise a mountain? Put a firecracker in sand. Put it an inch down and explode it, and it'll bring up a mound an inch high. Put it down two inches, and you'll bring up a mound two inches high. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said the bombs have a drill at the end of it with a timing device and that drill is made of the finest steel. The steel is not known to this world. It's the same steel that's in those wheels. It is not known to this world. And if you read anything that the white man writes on unidentified flying objects, they talk about a steel that they've never seen anything like it before. Don't you know that we, the original people, created all of this? Don't you know that we knew the white man before he came into existence and had prepared his destruction before he was even born? Do you think that this white man can overcome God? He's nothing to the power of the God who's on scene today. Listen, we're almost there. He says when that bomb hits the earth it has a timing device mechanism in it the drill goes off and it does not explode it just drills its way into the earth and when it gets a mile down it explodes sending up a mountain a mile high destroying everything in a 50 square mile radius 
those planes are deadly. They move at speeds that this world has never seen before. They have motion that this world has not seen. They take off going straight up and they can move right and left, forward and back, stop on a dime, move back, go forward. The, the, the mechanics, the dynamics, the aerodynamics of this has never been seen by the scientists of this world. Whether you're Russian, whether you're American, I don't give a damn who you are, you do not know this. We gave you only one book of mathematics when we gave you power to rule this world. There are 59,999 other books of higher mathematics that none of you have ever seen. The end of the white man is in sight. And your end is in sight if you don't straighten yourself up. God don't care nothing about all the people that's on the earth. He intends to kill most of them. You've become like a hill of dung. Manure, you know what that is. None of you have justified your existence even on the earth. Everything that God creates justifies being here by being what God created them to be. Everything except man. You've become nothing. And unless you accept your own and be yourself, he's going to kill you. And I'm with him to do just that. Take it or let it alone. The wheel has been seen over every major country on the earth. And the scientists are gathering in different parts of the world trying to figure out what's going on. There's a new vegetation on the wheel. There are new seeds on the wheel. There's new life on the wheel. You don't age on the wheel. The wheel is made by God. It's like a city in the sky. And I saw a new Jerusalem. A city, a, like a city, like a bride adorned for the groom coming down from heaven. Ain't no city coming down out of no sky. It's a wheel. And that wheel is as powerful or more powerful than the ark of Noah. God had to put animals in the ark. Two of every kind because when he destroyed, he was only going to reproduce what was already here. No! Behold, I make all things new. I'm using nothing of this but just you if you submit. God in person. Yeah, he told Elijah Muhammad over about 60 years ago, he said that he would bring every wheel in America to a halt. I want you to listen good because you're going to face it. You that think America is beautiful, huh? Think you can put your trust in Bush, huh? Or Clinton, huh? No, you're going to put your trust in God today. Otherwise, you're not going to make it. Gang banger, huh? You want to shoot, huh? You're going to die in the street like dogs. Your day is here now. I'm telling you, man, if I never see you again, it's all right. Because what I say to you today, I don't ever have to say it again. Let the word go forth to the ends of the earth. God is in person today. And he is manifesting his power in the West. He wants to make himself known. So he has allowed Russia to go down, everything to go down, leaving America as the only game in town because she's his meat. He said, I'm going to destroy America by myself. For you, for you, his people, he's going to kill her. And one from among you, he is already exalted. And I'm telling you, Elijah Muhammad don't love no white people. No, I don't, you don't need 
no flaws. I don't care nothing about what you think. My father don't love none of them. And he have the power now to do what God want him to do. He's already at the right hand. That's the man you call Christ. He ain't no cracker. He's a black man that look like you. Got hair like lamb's wool. You, you, you ready? Feet like burnished brass. See, you never did think nothing of yourself. But J. Edgar Hoover thought enough of you to know that the Messiah was coming right up out of you. God raised him. God taught him. God has empowered him. And the two of them are together like two arrows shot from the same bow. And the two of them is back in me. So I can't get weaker. I got to get stronger. Got to get bolder. I call Bush out for the fight. You want the nation of Islam now talking to the president. You got rid of Noriega. You got rid of Ortega. You working on Gaddafi and Saddam Hussein and Castro. But in your house, you got Louis Farrakhan and the nation of Islam. Wait a minute. Whether you like it or not, black America's listening to Farrakhan. Whether you like it or not, there's no other black leader left. God has set them all down. Jesse down. Hooks down. Jacob's down. NAACP gone. Urban League gone. Core gone. SNCC gone. The nation of Islam is the only game in town. The nation of Islam is all that's left of black people. But some of you don't like the nation. in your heart because the nation that you thought was dead and would never come back is up now and moving. He'll never fall again. Never fall again. Never fall again. Now that God is clearing the deck, in the 60s, there were many black leaders we could look to. God has cleared the deck. I didn't ask for the job. I was running away from it. But I can't outrun God. I've never thought of myself as no leader. The only leader I know is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, but he said he was making me to take his place among the people. Yes, and now I can't help myself. I'm on a course and I can't give up. We have a rendezvous with destiny. Yes, Pharaoh is upset now. Yes, because he's the only game in town. Yes, Jesse has bowed down. Yes, Hooks has bowed down. Yes, Jacobs has bowed down. Yes, the church has bowed down. Yes, the black leaders have bowed down. Yes, but we, the nation of Islam, We'll never bow our knee down to this blue-eyed devil. The 
Jews want us to apologize. Farrakhan, if you'd only apologize, apologize for what? Told them crackers, man, I'm not afraid of you. You can't do nothing to me but what God permitted. And if you, if you make your move, my God is going to kill you. Oh, I like to say that. I like to say that. Make a move and my God is going to kill you. I'm not talking about no spook God. I'm not talking about no spook God. I'm talking about the God who came in person to make us his people and he would be our God, the great Mahdi, the self-guided one who has power over all things. I thank him for his coming. Although I never saw his face, I thank him for raising up the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and empowering that man with wisdom unlike any wisdom I have ever heard before. And I thank him for allowing me to come into the fold and to believe. And because I sincerely loved Allah and loved the messenger and loved the truth and loved you, God allowed me to put my music aside to become a preacher of truth. And now with cassette and videotapes, a revolution has started all over the country when I was at Michigan State I said I'm a little fella with a trumpet and the white boy put it in the paper the next day he said a little fella with a trumpet but his people are listening and that's what got white people frightened I'm the first black man in a long long time that the masses of black people are listening to. And since God is sitting down, those whom black people used to listen to and raising up the one he wants them to listen to, then he's stirring up our enemies now. I want you to listen. Because our enemies do not want to submit to the God who came for them and they want no part of the nation of Islam. But as the nation gets stronger and stronger, the government now has to attack the nation. Ultimately, we knew that they would do this. But it would be a moment of insanity. See, Pharaoh didn't attack Moses until he went totally crazy. And it was when he attacked Moses, Aaron, and the children of Israel, that's when Jehovah drowned him. The nation of Islam, quiet as is kept, Very beautiful group of people. We love our people. Yes, sir. We don't want to hurt our people. Yes, sir. We've tried everything we know to avoid conflict with our people. Yes, and we will continue on that road. Yes, sir. But I ask you, in the name of Allah, 
don't let the white man incite you to come against the nation. Our defense is in the Quran. Yes, sir. Allah said he urged the hypocrites on against us so he could get a chance to kill them at our hands. And Allah said it was not you who slew them, it was I. See, God is no punk. God is not going to play with you. And he's not going to play with us. And he's not playing with those of us who say we believe in him. He's a real God. And he's angry. That's what is meant by the burning bush and the fire didn't consume it. A bush don't burn and is not consumed. He was on fire with rage against Pharaoh. And he wants to kill him. And every time Pharaoh would let the children of Israel go, God hardened his heart because he wanted to kill him. Master Farad Muhammad wants to kill America. And we are a dare. I'm like a dare. God is saying, yeah, that's my man. I dare you to touch him. I'll kill you. Now I'm going to show you. Brother and said, I'm not playing. I'm not playing. You see, God will answer me. Bush got the CIA, the FBI, the IRS. He got all them letters and all the power working to bring me in front of some court. And if he can't get me in any court of law, he wants to accuse me of the murder of Malcolm yes, and then stir up our youth in a vengeful way so you would come against the nation thinking you're doing God a favor. Don't make that mistake. I'm going to tell you, you have never seen hell break loose if you disturb this hive of bees it will take God to take us off your behinds I'm warning you in the name of Allah we're not playing we are for you we are not enemies of our people we are for you we love you We are given our lives for your redemption. But if you allow the enemy to urge you on against us, then we will kill you. In the name of our God, we will put more terror in your heart than you've ever known in your life to make you understand that God is real, man, and he's not playing today. Mr. Bush and the government of America, if you want to live, leave the children of Israel alone. If you want to live, Mr. Bush, and your government and your people, stop your genocidal plans against black people. If you want to live, because we, we, we will live. And those of us who don't live, we can't die. Because we know that enemy can only kill the flesh. But he's late now. Too late. The word is in the children now. Your own little babies will rise up and cut your head off if you punk out on their future today 
and act like some sissy. Here's a man that killed your people for 400 years and you're gonna side with him against your God and the God of your salvation? Your children will eat you alive. That's a generation born, born to kill. Yeah. We've got the most violent young generation that has ever been produced in the history of the world. That's not an accident. God fashioned it. America got to wake up. So the only game in town is Pharaoh. And the only game among black people that's in town is the little nation of Islam. The most organized, the most disciplined, the most unified, the most dedicated and zealous, and made the wisest of our people. But that creates envy and enmity and strife. Yes, sir. So we got to come together yes, sir. because the end is in sight. Yes, sir. If you don't unite with us, who will you unite with? Your doom is already set by Washington. They're killing you with AIDS. They're killing you with all kinds of diseases. They're putting toxic waste near the black community that will poison your water supplies. They want silent death to gradually move us off the scene. But God is present in person. I'm glad that I know him. Yes, sir. I'm glad that he is my friend. I'm glad that the risen Christ is a black man. And I'm glad to know him that he is my friend. And the two of them are sufficient for me. So I'll take this message to the ends of the earth. And I'm warning my Arab Muslim brothers, get out of the bed of Washington, D.C. King Fahad, Saudi Arabia, get out of bed with Bush. President Assad of Syria, Get out of the bed with Bush. President Mubarak of Egypt, get out of the bed with Bush. King Hussein of Jordan, get out of the bed with Bush. All you black presidents of Africa, stop kissing his ring. Don't even try to get in the bed with Bush. That bed will get you killed. Your people are rising. I'm talking about the masses. And they are angry as hell. And they will kill kings and cast them down. Get out of the bed with Bush. Jesse Jackson, get out of the bed with white people. and come home to your God. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. Was a band of angels coming after me. Coming to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. chariot of fire, swing low, 
Let these crackers see you. Swing low, sweet chap. Let them know that there's another power beside white power. The ants are stirred up. The bees are stirred up. The flies are stirred up. He's killing them with pestilence. We got a God that's going to kill white folk today. And black folk that won't do right. Get yourself together. The shock of the hour. It's a grievous thing. And when you see that wheel come down, when God declares open war on this devil, you will see terror like you never saw it before. And you will bite your fingers in intense regret, saying, would that I had taken away with the messenger. Would that I had just believed. Famine is on the way in America. Won't be no more Wendy's. They won't be able to get a cattle to grind the beef for you to eat. The weather is changing. The greenhouse effect. The ozone layer depleting. The sun burning, sun spots casting flames out from the sun, 10 to 30,000 miles burning up and scorching the earth. Seas drying up, leaving the fish stinking on the banks in the dry parched mud. Draw no rain in the cattle looking up to the sun, gritting its teeth, wondering what did I do? And the God saying to the cattle, it's not you. I just don't want your master to fatten you up and take you to the markets. I'm killing the cattle. I'm allowing the fish to be poisoned in the sea. I'm drying up the produce of the earth. And go open your Bible and read. When the famine strikes, you'll be looking at your little fat babies with the thought in mind. To eat your own children's flesh. Surely the shock of the hour. is a grievous thing. You better pray that your flight is not in winter. Your enemy is through. The white man is through. He looks like he got power. But it's only for a few more days. And in the twinkling of an eye. It'll be gone. And you who put your trust in money. You'll see the big tycoons. With thousand dollar bills. Lighten up their cigars. Because the money will be worthless. In the twinkling of an eye. You want to kill each other for this? You like killing, huh brother? You don't want to kill your enemy. You want to kill one another? Well, they'll be coming soon. In the ghetto. With their tanks. And their 30 caliber machine guns. And if you've never seen the helicopters used in Vietnam, you'll see them used on the ghetto. God is going to turn your white friend loose on you and drive you to him. And whoever is left, he's going to kill your enemy. But he's going to teach you a lesson. When God speaks to you, you have a duty to answer. You are now in the valley of decision. It's your move. May Allah bless you as I greet you in peace.
brothers and sisters, thank you. Would you be seated, please? I'm going to be out of here in a minute. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your attendance. The fire that you felt in my words today are not from myself. The hour is very serious and very late. This was given to me to deliver to you. You will start seeing these wheels over the major cities of America. They're not your enemies. They're your friends. So when you see them, don't you be afraid. If you see the big one, I can't tell you don't be afraid. White folk have seen it. One Japanese pilot was flying from Japan. He clocked it for an hour and a half on his radar. He saw it. He was terrified. And it appeared on the front page of the Washington Post. And when I went to the Washington Post, Minister Aleem, you were with me, weren't you? Would you step forward? And when I went to the Washington Post editorial room, they had a, was it a breakfast for me? Yes, sir. It was a breakfast. And what's the man's name who owns the Washington Post? Donald Graham. Donald Graham. And what's the, the, the man's name who's the chief editor of it? Ben Bradley. They were all in the room. And in a mocking way, they said to me, and what about this wheel business? Because they were at the press conference that I gave uh, two years earlier, but they never printed anything. But they remembered it. And they said, and what about this wheel business? And I looked that man dead in his eye, and I listed the presidents that had seen it and mentioned it, when they mentioned it, and then I mentioned what appeared on the front page of the Washington Post, and how the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had taught us about this wheel 60 years ago, and Ben Bradley was overheard speaking to another Caucasian saying, he knows. He knows. He knows. I do know. They're finished. And they're only held up by you believing in them and continuing to follow them. You've got to come out of them, my people, that you be not partakers of their sins and their plagues. They're going out. You don't want to go out with them. Thank you for a wonderful day. And I thank the ministers and laborers of the nation for a wonderful weekend. We got big work to do, ministers, captains, secretaries. So go on back and turn the wilderness upside down. Be bold in Master Farad Muhammad. How many of you are here for the first time, never been before? May I see your hands? Thank you. Thank you. In the balcony. Those of you who are here for the first time, how many of you believe that what you heard taught today, that it is the truth and is good for us as a people. May I see your hands? Would you raise them high? Very good. Excellent. Now, 
My last question, last question. Listen to it carefully. We thank the person that invited you. And we thank you for coming, because that's all you could do is accept an invitation and come. This is your home. If you want to come as often as you want to come, you're welcome. But while I was talking to you, there was another conversation going on that I wasn't privileged to hear. And that was the conversation between you and the Creator. The God I'm talking about. He and you were talking. And there were things that I said that may make you think that I know something about you personally. I don't know anything about any of you. But he knows everything about all of you. And while I'm in this state and in this spirit, he may use me to get a message to you. So while I was talking to you, he was talking to you, and you were talking to him. And in between that time, you may have come to some decision. What am I talking about? You know that what I said is true, and you know that something in you said, that's what I've been looking for. I'm going to stand with my brother and stand with God. And so I'm asking all those of you who believe it's the truth, how many of you are ready to take a stand on the side of the truth with Brother Farrakhan behind the leadership of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? And let's get busy and try to save our people. How many of you would like to do that? Let me see your hands. Raise them high. Real high. Very good. All praise is due to Allah. Then brothers and sisters, if you're up in the balcony or down in the lower auditorium, I want you to make your way down to the main floor or up to the main floor, and I want you to come down the center aisle so I can have the privilege of shaking your hand and welcoming you to the Nation of Islam. I want nobody to come shake my hand because you dig Farrakhan. Yeah, I ain't got no time for that. I dig you too. But this ain't no personality cult thing. It's all about God today, not Farrakhan. So brother and sister, those of you who are ready to make that move, I want the honor and the privilege of shaking your hand and welcoming you to the nation of Islam. And I want you, if you have that card in your hand, bring it forward with you. If you don't have it, we'll give you a card. I want you to fill it out and turn it in. And everyone else, keep your seat until we shake everybody's hand and we'll have prayer and we'll go home. Sisters, come right on out to the center aisle. Sisters, would you move out of the way and let the sisters come through? Brothers, would you move and let the brothers come through? Brothers and sisters, come on down and let me shake your hands. Brothers and sisters, let's form our lines in the center aisle. As you come forward to shake the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's hand.